Billy's Paintings Number 1 The Hand This is the first video in a short series of videos about Billy's paintings. It is not exhaustive. I will merely be covering the paintings that Billy discusses or mentions in memoirs. This is the painting called The Hand and features on the back cover of memoirs. What does the hand mean to you? This passage is taken from page 490 in chapter 56 of the 2023 edition of memoirs. Essentially, I want all of my art to strike an inner chord of real existence. Even unearthly art can cast shadows of real life emotions or meanings. If I can layer those feelings or meanings, all the better. See them with the painting I titled The Hand. I do not normally have any desire to explain such intricacies from a painting. I prefer to let each observer work his or her own way down past the various levels without guides limiting your thinking by telling you what to hear or see in songs or art. Nothing stops a personal search faster than the idea of already having the answer. Moreover, if we are not searching for it, the answer is meaningless. Search for the meaning in the hand on the back cover. After you read about it and understand the hand, it will be too late for you to be free to discover it. For real observation, consider the picture now before I spoil it for you. Find your own meaning. If I can enhance your meaning later, that is even better. Still, you will never again be this free to consider it with your own eyes. With your own mind, the work reflects your own soul to you. Once you have my interpretation, you will essentially see mine. That is why I usually do not explain my own art. I prefer that it be a mirror to reflect your soul. Have you studied it yet? What is it to you? Are there any new awarenesses of your own feelings? Take note. What did it reflect to you? And so I've somewhat taken his advice, and maybe you should too. Have a look at the painting now and think about what it means to you before I ruin it as well and give you my interpretation. It should also be noted that chapter 56 breaks down to 5 plus 6, which equals 11. According to Crowley, 11 is the general number for magic, which is why it has a K. I should say at this point that, although I already intended to make this series, some weeks ago someone contacted me with some work and research of their own and shared it with me. He wanted to remain anonymous and so I shall respect his wishes, but I'm grateful for his input and he will recognise his work in my video. So one of the first things that I thought of when I first looked at the hand was of course the hand. And being as my grandparents were Romany gypsies and were pretty good palmists, I thought of palmistry. That was my first association. And so here I've included the painting and the palmist hand, the left-handed version to match the hand, and a blown up detail of the hand from the painting. It's interesting to note that many of the lines and the mounds that would be expected in a palm reading are actually present in Billy's hand in this painting. If you're not acquainted with palmistry, these are the sorts of things I'm talking about. Each of the fingers and the mound just below each of them relates to a planetary or celestial body. The mount of the thumb is Venus. The index finger is Jupiter. The middle finger is Saturn. The ring finger, the sun. The little finger is Mercury. The outer edge of the palm is Luna, the moon. The base of the palm between Luna and the Venus mounts is Neptune. The middle of the palm directly under the Jupiter and Mercury mounts is Mars. And equally, the 12 
joints that make up the fingers also represent the whole zodiac. So the index finger contains Aries, Taurus and Gemini. The middle finger contains Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. The ring finger contains Cancer, Leo and Virgo and the little finger Libra, Scorpio and Sagittarius. But then I thought we are talking about people who are Kabbalistic at heart. Perhaps I should consider Kabbalistic palmistry and it is such a thing. The Kabbalistic form of palmistry involves a mapping of the tree of life onto the hands. The three most important Zephyroth that appear in the hands are Chest, Gabora and Tepereth, which form the central triangle, shown in the primary colours of blue, red and yellow. We can see that here on the left. Chest in blue represents mercy and kindness. It is represented by the right hand. More importantly, it is represented by the vertical lines on the hands. Gabora in red represents strength and restraint. It is identified with the left hand. It is also identified with the horizontal lines. It can block or interfere with the positive effects of the vertical lines. Tipereth in yellow represents harmony and beauty. It is represented by a vertical line in the middle of the hand. It is called the line of Maisel or luck. In traditional palmistry it is known as the line of fate and plays a similar role. In traditional palmistry all the fingers are significant. In Kabbalistic palmistry only the little fingers and middle fingers are examined. The little finger relates to matters concerning business or marriage. The middle finger represents the thoughts of a person and how they result in action. The horizontal and vertical lines form patterns known as the five gates which show how successful or unsuccessful the person will be. Now let's consider a passage from chapter 14 of Memoirs. This is taken from page 132 and concerns palm references in the album work, most especially the album cover of Sgt Pepper. It has been noted that there is an open hand over my head, which is a sign of death. Now notice it is also a wordplay. The palm is exposed, or, spelling palm another way, we expose Paul M. It is above my head, since I too represent Paul M. Off to the side, there stands another Paul M. substitute. It is a palm, Paul M., tree. There is a wax substitute of Paul M. on the other side of the album. The palm is above my head, also in two images, in the Magical Mystery Tour booklet. Two more times on the original Yellow Submarine album cover, one on the front, one on the back, and is on a photograph in the Yellow Submarine movie press pack. It is on for several seconds in the Yellow Submarine movie and is also in our Magical Mystery Tour movie. The palm repeatedly brings to mind the death and replacement of Paul M. Also note that the chapter number of 14 breaks into 1 plus 4, which is 5, the number of points on the Magical Pentagram. Also, if we go back and look at the emboldened text, we read, The palm is exposed, Paul M., Paul M, Paul M. It is a palm, Paul M, tree. Of Paul M, the palm is above my head. With all this talk of palms on the hand and palm trees, I immediately thought of St. Paul the First Hermit. The Christian St. Paul, aka Paul of Thebes, was born in 227 AD in Egypt. He was said to have lived alone in the desert of Thebes from the age of 16 until his death at 113. He fled there to avoid persecution. Whilst there, he lived in a cave near a spring and a palm tree which provided him with clothing and food until the age of 43 when a raven would visit him daily with half a loaf of bread. We know about St. Paul because Antony the Great, who 
later became a hermit saint himself, saw him in a dream and went to find him shortly before Paul died. And you can see him dressed in his palms, being visited by his raven, which in turn made me think of the song Blackbird. Anthony had a dream of Paul, and in memoirs we're encouraged to have dreams of Paul. I actually did have a dream of Paul, but probably not the one that they wanted. I had a dream where I went back in time, and I convinced Paul to not get involved with the Beatles. That would have been a very different history, wouldn't it? From the appendices in the back of Crowley's 777 and other Kabbalistic writings, the word hand, written in Hebrew, has a gematria value of 14. This relates back to chapter 14 of Memoirs, which talks about hand palms and palm trees, and of course, the painting of the hand. Likewise, the words he suffered or dread terror, written in Hebrew, have a dramatical value of 56. This relates to chapter 56 of Memoirs, which discusses Billy's paintings, especially the hand. I will return to chapter 56 later to discuss Billy's interpretation of his painting. For now, let's consider other Kabbalistic meanings within the painting. Also in the back of 777, we have a list of the Hebrew letters, including Kaf. Kaf is noted as the palm of the hand. It is the hub of the wheel from which the force of the five elements spring. The reference is particular to Jupiter and the tenth Atu. That is his word for the major arcana cards in a tarot deck. The regular form may suggest the fist, the final, the open hand. He's talking about the two forms of the letter kaf, one that's used at the beginning and the middle of a word, and one that's used at the end, known as the final. In 777, Crowley's description of kaf states that it is the all-father, three in one. It represents the three alchemical principles of mercury, sulfur and salt, and their complementary elements of fire, air and water, or the three gunas, virtues or attributes, in Samkhya, a kind of Hindu philosophy. These include the sattva, which is light, goodness and purity, rajas, passion and activity, and tamas, which is destruction and chaos. The letter kef represents the number 20. Its final form, indicating an open hand, represents 500, but this is rarely used. Taf and Kof, which is 400 plus 100, being used instead. According to Crowley in 777, 100 is the number of Kof, the perfect illusion, 10 by 10, and also Kef, the Wheel of Fortune, which made me think of the Wheel of Fortune card, seen here on the right. Its identity is fatality, change, illusion, and is connected to the Buddhist wheel of samsara. Furthermore, the letter kof means back of the head. In 777, its value is likewise 100. It represents the zodiac sign Pisces and the moon card seen here on the left. This reminded me of references in memoirs which state that the beetle's purpose was to complete the age of Pisces. Pisces, the fishes, also has connections into alchemy, which we will see later. Combining the 100 of cough, which means back of the head, with 56, which means dread, terror, or he suffered, we have 156. This is the number of the sacred whore of Babylon, due to its gematria. She is seen in the lust card of the Toth deck. Babylon is also known as the Scarlet Woman and the Great Whore because she denies no one, yet she extracts a great price. The very blood of the adept and his ego identity as an earthly individual. She is also synonymous of Isis. The spelling of Babylon with an A rather than a Y is to make its gematria sum to 156. This is the number of squares on each of the elemental Enochian tablets of the magicians D and Kelly. 
These tablets are themselves identified with the city of the pyramids, with each square being the base of a pyramid. Within Thelema, the adept reaches a final stage where he must cross the abyss of nothingness and disillusion. Koronzon dwells there, and his job is to trap the traveller in his meaningless world of illusion. However, Babylon is just on the other side, beckoning. If the adept gives himself to her, the symbol of this act is the pouring of the adept's blood into her grail. He becomes impregnated in her, then to be reborn as a master and a saint that dwells in the city of the pyramids. Consider the death cover story of Paul McCartney. He is lured to death by picking up a beautiful woman hitchhiker and then crashes his car as a result, only to be reborn within Billy, who is the master of the new Aeon of Horus. Is the similarity of this story to the journey of the adept within Thelema a synchronicity or deliberate? Look at page 156 of Memoirs. It discusses alluring females, Rita, the lovely meter maid, the hitchhiker Donna, and the song Death Cab for Cutie, with its curves that can kill, meaning both Donna's curves and the winding road that took their lives. In a note on Genesis, Libra 2261, it states, The letter Yod, which also means hand, is the hand of God, always the symbol of his power, symbolising power in action, and its tarot key is the hermit and the voice of light, the prophet of the gods. Thus proclaimed is the reign of the gods of light. Their god of light is Lucifer, and this leads us back to the Luciferian ideals within Paulism and the palm or hand of Paul. The hermit tarot card mentioned above also reminds us of Saint Paul the hermit, whom we discussed earlier. So let's go back to the painting. The aspect that leaps out at the observer is the blue of the sky with its zigzag pattern. The title of Crowley's book 777 refers to a lightning flash pattern which can be superimposed upon the Kabbalistic tree of life, suggesting three diminishing sevens and referring to the sum value of the gematria of its paths. Is the zigzag of the sky a reference to the lightning flash of the Kabbalah? Now consider the colour blue itself. Within Crowley's Toth deck, there are four colour scales. The king scale is the most divine and superior. Within the king scale, sky blue is associated with the high priestess card with her esoteric knowledge. What of the russet tones? They are associated with the chariot card in the prince scale a card easily connected with Paul's last car journey and its fatal obstacles. The hand among the heavy roots in the painting also reminded me of the Norse world tree Yggdrasil, which is said to have its roots in the underworld of the dead. The god Odin sacrificed himself voluntarily by hanging for nine days from that tree in order to gain the wisdom of the universe and the knowledge of mankind. Also note that nine is a number associated with Paul, in conjunction with Billy's six. The roots of Yggdrasil were gnawed on by an evil serpent. Similar stories to this can be seen in other mythologies, all the way back to the Sumerians. It could also be said to mirror the crucifixion story of Christ. In the Toth deck, the hanged man is regarded as an evil legacy from the old Eon of Osiris, Crowley states that it is the card of the dying god. Its importance in the present pack is merely that of a cenotaph. If the hanged man is the card of sacrifice in the Aeon of Osiris, it is also symbolic of Paul's sacrifice, especially as Paul is said to be Osiris, according to Billy and the adherence of Philema. The Aeon of Osiris is synonymous with the supreme formula of adeptship, expressed by I-N-R-I or I-A-O. This is seen in the Hermetic Rose Cross, seen here on the right. 
The four large white barbs between the sections of the cross spell out I N R I. These Latin letters are transcribed from the original Hebrew letters Yod, Nun, Resh, and Yod. Their astrological meanings are Virgo, Scorpio, and Sol, or the Virgin, the Evil Serpent, and the Sun. They are said to describe the story of Genesis, the story of Christ's Passion, or the Egyptian story of Isis, who mourns because her evil serpent relative Apophis has killed her husband Osiris. Isis raises Osiris from the dead to begin the cycle again, hence the ineffable name I-A-O, which is Isis, Apophis, Osiris. The Aeon of Isis is associated with elemental water. The Aeon of Osiris is associated with elemental air. The Aeon of Horus is associated with elemental fire. These elemental aspects are also linked to the three alchemical principles of salt, mercury and sulphur. These are repeatedly shown as signs on the Rose Cross. The three mother letters of Hebrew are also associated with the three primitive elements. They are shown here as the three primary coloured petals at the centre of the rose. Air, Aleph, shown as the full card in the tarot deck. Water, Mem, shown as the hanged man card in the tarot deck. And fire, which is Shin, shown as the Aeon card, normally referred to as the Last Judgment. In the inside front cover of memoirs in more recent editions from 2021 to 2023, we get this paragraph. Palm, Paul M, meaning in the hand, photographed by Amanda Bird, is discussed in chapters 14 and 56. As you consider Paul's violent death and William's anguish, the hidden implications will evolve with you. Let the painting work on you before perusing ancient symbolism or modern ritual that is not included in the memoirs. Be aware of your own feelings about the painting before layering the work with more meaning. Now, the person who contacted me had the 9 after 909 edition, where instead it says this. Palm, Paul M, symbolism seen in the hand, shown on the back cover, is revealed in chapter 14, 119 He Die. That painting's aspects of Paul's death and William's anguish are shown in chapter 56, Songs, Poems and the Paintings, reprinted in Beatles Enlightenment. Let that painting work on you independently before discovering the symbolism revealed in that chapter. By so doing, your own personal meanings will become enriched, not invalidated, by what you learn. Become aware of your own personal feelings and applications. If we look down the left hand side we see an acrostic reading of Palm Aspects Let Meanings. Palm Aspects Let Meanings is a reference to bloodletting from the palm of the hand. Fiat Lux or Let There Be Light. The blood light in this sense is the mercury and fire that appears on the palm of the alchemical cipher of the hand of the royal art, seen here on the left. Let is light, and the light, or life, is in the blood. A large part of the practice of alchemy is to liberate spirit from matter, and bloodletting has been one of the codes for this in alchemical literature. Also note that mercury is shown as a fish. I told you that would come back. The silver watery mercury is symbolised here as a fish, as mercury is the water that does not wet the hand. The word fiat is also interesting. It is a mnemonic of flatus, ignus, aqua, terra, or the four alchemical elements of all creation. Air, fire, water and earth. The word lux also indicates the light of the cross which is why the last letter is an X, or a cross. At the end of the formal ceremony involving the I-N-I-R, or I-A-O, as seen earlier, the proceeding is closed with the phrase, Lux, Light of the Cross. 
In Billy's painting, The Hand, each of the three faces form a letter T, and T is the 20th letter of the English alphabet. So these three faces add up to 60. Adding the five letters of the hand makes it 65, the mirror of 56, the chapter in which Billy describes his own interpretation of the hand. So let's now look at that chapter. This is an excerpt taken from page 490 to 493 of Memoirs. This is Billy's take on the painting. The hand belongs to someone in this fallen, hairy world. Some soul having a hard time in this world of forms. Chaotic confusion, suffering. Kind of dark? It will get even darker. The person is reaching out for help, aware of the guardians hovering above the earth. Yet, they are out of reach. The person reaching from this dark world can sense the light flowing down too, and can feel it dripping down his or her fingers, but cannot soak in it. The light is there, but is not revealing anything to save him or her. Guardians hovering over are of another realm or existence. As shown by their mushroom foreheads, the guides are of another reality. Shrooms have often been used to increase inner world consciousness, spiritual connectedness, or mystical visions of parallel universes. Such altered states can include fairies, leprechauns, or Alice in Wonderland type of entities. The hand shows guides of a spiritual reality. The individual reaches for help in the hairy world. Another prominent feature of these shroomy guides is their profound noses, or profound gnosis, maybe. In old Hebrew representations, Breath typifies spirit. A nose that breathes air suggests the living soul, as a body and eternal spirit housed together. Our eyes may see things of the world, and our ears may hear sounds of the world, but the nose breathes something we do not see, hear or touch. It is the most mystical of our five senses, dealing with the less tangibly tactile elements of the world. It is also a symbol of life. The guardians are all of a parallel spiritual realm, but not of this fallen, organic world that is well enough established by the mushroom noses and foreheads. Foreheads represent the brain or intellect. Beings of noses and foreheads, these non-worldly guardians are all spirit and intellect. That is a problem. Moving about high above the earth, they can smell, spiritually sense, the presence of the poor unfortunate soul down below reaching up for help. They can all sense that they are needed but cannot see anyone. They have no eyes. When the sufferer calls for their help, they cannot hear. They have no ears. Nonetheless, it does not matter. Even if they saw and heard, they have no mouths. They cannot speak. They cannot guide those below. Without hands or arms, they cannot reach out to them, take them by the hand or hold them. However, those who suffer alone in a dreary reality cannot know any of that. The hand anxiously reaches up for them for relief. They are the guides over each of us that do not seem to be doing enough. Or worse, what if our trusted guardians intend to hurt us? Might they be instruments of our death? Sometimes we feel desperate or forsaken. It is not how life really is. That is, it is not how real life is. Isolation is illusory, but it is how we may feel. When everything goes wrong, we interpret the universe most darkly. It feels as if all is cold against us. Yet, we may see that the Good Shepherd, <laughs> as Cyrus as well as Billy, cares for his flock. All is good, after all, until he wants mutton. Another layer of interpretation is that it is Paul, buried in the earth reaching up for the other three, for them to carry on his work. He can feel their showering music dripping down his outstretched fingers. That is one of the great things about songs, poems and paintings. We can see all such arts in extraordinarily different ways. 
On this level, it is Beatles' music that revives the departed Paul. It calls Paul from the grave. As our music reaches down through the tangled earth, Paul M. reaches up to feel it, stretching his palm, Paul M., from the grave, bringing him back. That may seem impossible until you recall that he, being attached to me, comes alive in me, so to speak. Whenever I do his work, singing in his place, carrying on in his likeness. Since I represent Paul, his hand reaching up is also seen as my own. Furthermore, I cannot recall Paul's death without also remembering that I, too, left a life behind. My William life is, as it were, buried with Paul. I am the one who needs them to lend a hand. I reach out to John, George and Ringo, expecting them all to be greater than they were. I did not realise how deaf, dumb and blind they had become without their dear Paul. To continue on, all they needed was my hand, or palm, Paul M, in it. And again, if we go back and look at the emboldened text we read, the light is there to save him or her. Shrooms have inner world consciousness. Our eyes may see, our ears may hear. It is also a parallel world. That is a problem. Above the earth, they cannot see the sufferer. It is not real life when the universe is cold against us. It is Paul to the other three. He can feel their outstretched songs. I am out to be greater than Paul. Lastly, and I got these references from Billy's art book called Paul McCartney Paintings. It should be noted that the mushroom faces depicted in the hand are typical of a set of paintings by Billy, referred to as the Celts. These were based on photographs taken from the book The Celts, First Masters of Europe. One of these photographs is seen on the right. They are quite typical of the way faces are seen in Celtic stone artwork. We will return to these images later on in this video series, but for now we should ponder on why Billy chose Celtic artwork to base his own paintings on. Is it because both he and Paul have Celtic ancestry, or for some other reason? What do you think of the hand? Let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.